This episode has been filmed on a Panasonic GX9. The Panasonic Lumix G 25mm f1.7 ASPH is a bargain. It cost me only £148 for Amazon.co.uk. The lens comes with front and rear caps and a very nice lens hood. The Panasonic 25mm is designed for a micro four third sensor and cannot be adapted onto other mounts. 25mm and micro four thirds gives you a full frame equivalent of 50mm. A 50mm lens is a general purpose lens which is good for travel, street photography and everyday shooting. The f1.7 aperture is also good for low light image making. The Panasonic 25mm does not have image stabilisation which is a shame. However, many of the Panasonic cameras have sensor stabilisation. Here is a lens being used without stabilisation. And here is a lens being used with a GX9 sensor stabilisation. As you can see, the sensor stabilisation really helps to smooth out the micro jitters of handheld filmmaking. This 25mm lens is made in Japan, but is not weather sealed. The lens mat is metal, but the rest of the lens is made from a high quality plastic which does feel solid. The lens only weighs 125 grams, and I'm more than happy with the build quality and weight. The filter diameter is 46mm, which is a common size of micro four thirds. One good thing is that 46mm filters can be found online cheap. Unfortunately, the 25mm is a focus by wire lens. In fact, all Panasonic G lenses are focused by wire. When manually focusing, the front of the lens doesn't extend or rotate, which helps when using a variable ND filter. All the focusing is done internal, and the lens's size doesn't change. I'm not a fan of focus by wire lenses, but Panasonic has the best implementation I've seen so far, and it's very easy to manually focus with this lens. The focus ring turns smoothly and it feels great when turning. This lens does suffer from focus breathing. I've seen worse breathing on far more expensive lenses, but I wouldn't try rack focus with this lens. So how is the image quality of the Panasonic 25mm? At f1.7 and in the centre, the lens is sharp. As expected, the corners are soft. I'm still amazed how sharp this lens is in the centre. In low light situations this lens is going to give you sharp images on your point of focus. At f2, the centre sharpness increases slightly and we see better contrast. The corners show no improvements. At f2.8, again the centre sharpness increases. The corners are now slowly improving. At f4, I would say the resolution in the centre is about the same as f2.8. Once again the corners are slowly improving. At f5.6, the centre sharpness increases slightly. The corners now show a big improvement. At f8, the centre sharpness is about the same as f5.6. The corners now look perfect. If you're shooting landscape, this is the aperture to use. At f11, the lens becomes soft from the effects of diffraction. I find this lens to be ridiculously sharp and perfectly usable at f1.7. All you are really doing by stepping down is increasing your depth of field. Chromatic aberrations have not been a problem in my video images. Now for distortion and vignetting. Geometric distortions are corrected automatically, even in the RAW files. As you can see, the lens has no issues with distortions. At f1.7, you can see some vignetting, but step down to f2.8 and the vignetting disappears. As you can see, Fire is not a big concern with this lens. The majority of the time I don't even bother using the supplied lens hood. When pointing the lens towards the sun, you will see a green ghost. The seven iris blades create 14 points on stars. The minimum focus distance is 25cm, so you can get super close to your subject. Close up images look to be very good with this lens. Now for bokeh, at f1.7 the bokeh balls do show a circular shape, however the more you step down the more the bokeh becomes a heptagonal shape due to the lens only having 7 iris blades. I like the heptagonal bokeh, it reminds me of some old school size lenses. When inspecting the balls close up they can show some onion ringing and busyness inside the balls. On the whole I do like the bokeh from this lens. So to conclude, I really like this budget lens from Panasonic. The 25mm is a prime lens that covers a micro four third sensor at a bargain price. 
Yeah, it's a plastic lens, but the build quality, small size and lightweight is great. Generally, I don't like focus by wire lenses, but Panasonic's implementation is the best I've used so far. I find the images on this lens to be very sharp and perfectly usable when shot wide open. This lens is perfect for portraits, landscapes, street, low light, travel and day trips out. This is a fun lens and should be in your Micro Four Thirds kit. The Panasonic Lumix 25mm f1.7 comes highly recommended. Thanks for watching.